So, have you guys ever noticed how when you see those stereotypical images of witches, there's always like this big cast iron cauldron and there's all these different things cooking, there's all these weird ingredients, berries and roots and what have you, chicken bones, other animal parts, anything and everything possible that for most modern audiences seems a little hard to get? Especially then you see the bottles of like, lizard's tongue and Eye of Newt and all those other kinds of funny little names. Because what a lot of these TV shows and, you know, depictions of witches won't tell you is that things like Eye of Newt or like other weird names like that are honestly just folk names of stuff we already know about. And in fact, you can find plenty of these folk names in Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. For instance, Pimpernel is also called things like Herb of Mary, Poor Man's Weather Glass, or The Shepherd's Weather Glass. It sounds pretty magical to have something called Poor Man's Weather Glass, I'm just saying. Another good one is Pennyroyal, actually, which was also called Organ Broth, Organ Tea, Lurk in the Ditch, or Mosquito Plant. The reality is a lot of those mystical ingredients were just whatever a witch happened to have on hand. That is quite literally one of the fundamental pieces of witchcraft, is accessibility. And that's why today I want to talk about forgetting the aesthetic and forgetting, you know, the things that look nice when it comes to cooking and focus on what just gets the job done. And that's mainly through canned and frozen vegetables. My biggest advice to any kitchen witches, especially as food prices keep growing, is to focus on just getting your staples in a shelf-stable way. So, for instance, there are a lot of vegetables I normally buy fresh, like peppers, but there are also plenty of options to get peppers already pre-frozen. I often just kind of chop mine up and freeze them myself because I like to control the way that they are cut and what else is in them. But there are plenty of packages that actually do just have what you need right there. For instance, this package here of onions and peppers. This would be great for like any kinds of fajita nights, the chicken taco bowls. Perfect. For me, this isn't something I buy because these longer strips aren't things I use that often. I prefer to dice and cube my vegetables, but it's still a great way to go because this four pound bag is the same price as like just four bell peppers. It's kind of wild. And even though things like onions tend not to be that expensive, that can still help you also with some kitchen prep because, you know, for chicken taco bowls, when you just kind of want to make that onion and pepper bean mix up, you literally just dump this in the pot. It's super easy. Another thing I like to do is get actual frozen fruits as well, especially for my smoothies. Frozen fruits are great. And there are also ones that are just pure blueberry or pure cherry, and you can make baked goods with that too. If you just thaw them a little bit, chances are they're gonna become soup when you bake them into a pie anyway. So if you just drain any extra water, probably will work all the same. But especially for things like smoothies or other cold items like that, they replace having to put actual ice in the blender because they themselves are already basically the ice. And it's a good way to get other fruits that otherwise you wouldn't really have much of a use for. Like, I don't buy fresh pineapple pretty much ever, but a tropical fruit blend? Hell yeah. And if you don't have, like, a ton of freezer space to get frozen foods, that's fine because if you got pantry space, you can get all kinds of canned goods. I mean, these are really cheap. Some for less than a dollar less than a dollar for a can of, say, peas or anything like that, that works pretty well. You can stock up on a lot of good fruits and vegetables that would otherwise be pretty expensive if you bought them fresh. There is one caveat, though, about things that are, you know, canned or pre-sliced or frozen like that, and that is something that applies to any food. The more work goes into preparing it and processing it, the more the cost is going to go up. So that's why things like raw onions tend to be super, super cheap because they are the most commonplace root vegetable that God could possibly make. Like, they're everywhere, they're in every store, they are a base of pretty much every and any meal. There's no way onions could ever be expensive because there's just... That would be crazy. But when you have a bag of, you know, frozen pre-sliced peppers and onions, that will impact the cost. When you have things like pre-cooked noodles or you have, you know, pre-cooked meats or something, those ready-made meals, the price will go up because of the time and effort to process and package those meals in a shelf-stable and sustainable way. 
So if you are going to look for canned or frozen things, it's good to get them as little processed as possible. So if you can get the raw shrimp or the raw fish, do that. If you can get vegetables or fruits that aren't cut up and are just like frozen as they are, try that. If you can get anything that isn't super processed, do that. Because otherwise it's going to raise the price over time, which inevitably is going to outpace the, your savings. And while I know before I have said things like, uh, you know, herbs that you grow yourself are more powerful magically than herbs you buy from the store, the truth is that something like that's only true because of the energy you yourself have poured into growing and loving that plant. Otherwise, the stuff you get from the store is still perfectly magical. And just because something is not fresh does not mean that it is any less magical. If we really think about the way our food even gets delivered to the store, by the time you pick up a fresh bell pepper, it's already been there for quite a while. It's already been off the vine for a good amount of time. So if anything, you're going to have less time to use it because it's going to go bad faster. But if you get something that's already canned or frozen, now you can use it for a lot longer. You can stockpile it when you do have the extra money to spend on storing those goods and you can just have a lot more options for when you don't know what to cook for dinner and you look in your pantry and see all kinds of stuff available. A strawberry is a strawberry. It doesn't matter if you bought a fresh box of strawberries, it doesn't matter if you bought strawberry jam, it doesn't matter if you bought frozen strawberries. The power of that strawberry is still going to be readily available to you in any form that it's in. I would even argue that you could charm a strawberry shake from McDonald's if you really wanted to, and at some point we can absolutely talk about how to make fast food magic too. But, when you are just trying to get some extra magic and some extra nutrients into your meals, you don't need to have the freshest herbs and the freshest produce. Sometimes, frozen and canned perfectly does the job. And you've seen me use frozen stuff and canned stuff in plenty of my videos before when I cook food. It's just not reasonable or accessible or sustainable to demand that people always use the freshest, most you know, homegrown ingredients, because not everyone has the space, not everyone has the time, and certainly not everyone has the cash to be shelling out for fresh produce. Especially produce that isn't in season. And to bring it back to our image of that witch in her own hut, she had the big black cauldron because that was what she cooked in, that was what everyone cooked in on the hearth fire. She had all those roots and berries that she likely foraged herself. She had all of these, you know, chicken bones and things probably because she had her own animals. In short, she had what was already available to her, and her magic was made from the things that she had on hand and could easily get. The image of the witch isn't one that is unattainable, and a lot of witchcraft aesthetics sometimes make us feel like we have to have a certain look, or we have to have, you know, certain tools or certain things, and that's not the case. Especially in kitchen witchery, your entire kitchen is a magical arsenal, whether it's great value corn, or whether it's you know, some fancy heirloom tomato. It doesn't matter what it is. The fact that it is nourishing you, both mind, body, and yes, in spirit, is enough. And I know we'd all love to be those, you know, people on TikTok who make these beautiful cooking videos and use all of these very interesting and fancy ingredients, but at the end of the day, if you're just trying to feed yourself without really beating up your wallet, there is nothing less magical about taking the cost-efficient and space-efficient option. So, that is just a little grocery tip and a little discussion for you guys this week. Remember, everything that comes out of the ground is magic, even if it's been processed and packaged. And so with all that said, I will see you guys next week for another Making Meals Master Course episode. So, see ya! By the way, if you want to see these videos two weeks earlier, consider subscribing to my Patreon, where you not only get all these videos, but also recipe cards, uh, specific deity profiles, and lots of other interesting things to look at. Video tiers start at $10 a month, so definitely consider checking it out.